G'day Internet, and welcome back to another video. So, it'll come as no surprise to many that my all-time favourite game console is the Sega Master System. It's the first game console I ever had, and clearly, it has stayed with me ever since. But taking a look at the Master System, you would assume that it is the Master System 1 that is my favourite. But it's not. It's actually the Master System 2, because this is what I actually had as a kid. I like its small size, I like its swoopy shape, but most of all, I love it because it came with possibly one of the best 8-bit games ever built right in. But the Master System 2 isn't all rainbows and sunshine. No, it didn't come with FM sound, but then neither did the Master System 1 in most countries. Its main limitation is how you plug this thing into a television. While the Master System 1 gave you options for RF, composite, and RGB with the right cable, this poor old thing only gave you RF, and as we all know, it's possibly the worst way of trying to hook up anything to a television. But the Model 2 is not hard to modify for composite video, and getting RGB with the correct cable can be done with only a little bit of screwing around. And if you're interested in the latter, you can check out my video on modding it for RGB. But what if I told you, with a bit of careful shopping, you can get for yourself a Master System 2 with RGB enabled, with no modding required, and it came that way straight from Sega? Well, it happened, and it's thanks to France. But before we get into that, just a little bit of background. While the rest of the world used either PAL or NTSC for their television standard, France used CCAM, one of only a handful of countries that did, the other countries being mostly Russian states or parts of Africa, neither of which were bountiful markets for Sega in the late 80s. The story goes that because of France's odd one out TV standard, Sega didn't want to develop a whole new master system just for this market. However, another standard popular in France was RGB over SCART, and given the Master System could natively produce RGB with a bit of filtering and amplification, that's the route that Sega took for the Master System in France. But how did they go about it? Before we get stuck into the French Master System 2, let's familiarise ourselves with a normal run-of-the-mill Master System 2. This particular one is an Australian release PAL one, and if we remove the cover, we can take a look at the main board. So this is what the main board in a Master System 2 looks like, and the differences between the PAL and the NTSC one are very minimal. Um, but essentially we've got our processor, we've got RAM and ROM and things like that, um, and our RF modulator. Uh, but the main thing we're interested in is this chip here, which is the Sega 3155246. This is the graphics processor. This here produces the RGB signals, which then get fed to this chip here, which is the Sony CXA1145. This isn't a video chip per se, it is an amplifier and mixer. It takes all the audio and video signals in and then pumps out composite video um, and which feeds out and where you would tap into for an AV mod and also into the RF modulator. So, and there's a whole bunch of accompanying um, resistors and capacitors and things like that all to benefit this mixer. But what happens in the French one? This is the main board from the French RGB Master System 2. And as you can see, there is a hell of a lot missing. We've still got our primary graphics chip. However, all the mixer and accompanying resistors and all the rest of the circuitry, as well as the RF modulator, are all missing. And after running through traces and all the rest of it, the short version is, is the RGB signals out of the graphics chip essentially route through and straight to this DIN connector here. Now, those signals on their own can't be plugged straight into a television. They need filtering and amplification and things like that before a television will recognise the signal. 
So how did Sega go about that? Well, Sega produced this special cable, and at one end there is simply a DIN connector, and at the other end a SCART connector, and part way along this brick. And if we pull the cover off this brick, we can take a look inside. There isn't really that much going on. We've got a power regulator here, we've got a bunch of resistors and capacitors for, I'm assuming, filtering and signal balance, uh, and then a series of resistors for amplification. And that's how they went about it. The raw signal from the video chip ran straight out through the DIN connector and then was sorted out, so to speak, here in this brick and then fed out to the SCART connector. So obviously RGB over SCART is useful to us now in the 21st century, either with a flat panel screen that natively supports SCART or with a cheap SCART to HDMI converter. Either way, you can get a fantastic image quality on a modern TV. Now, obviously there is a bunch of devices out there that can emulate the mask system really well. I get the impression that emulating the mask system was bedded down quite a long time ago. And look, I've got a bunch of those devices myself. Um, I've got my Blast 16 uh, console in a retro flag case. Um, I've got a GPI case. I've got my GPDXD. Um, I've got my new Raspberry Pi 4 based uh, retro Pi thing. Um, and even this piece of rubbish can do it as well. I may have a bit of a problem. But at the end of the day, as they say, you can't beat original hardware. And that's why I like the French RGB Master System 2. But I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, click like, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. I've got my GPI, um, I've got my... Let's try that again.